What's up guys and welcome back to this week's episode of Headphones Neil Reviews and I guess you can't be back for a new episode but that's neither here nor there. Um, so this week's episode is going to be a little bit more truncated than usual um, just because I don't really have much to say about The Walking Dead Daryl Dixon. They're making their way to France to find this radio so I guess he can go back to the states i guess so we'll see how that goes um we have laurent slowly figuring out that he's not the messiah but then daryl telling the nun lady that um sure he got lucky with his birth he survived the c-section so he is a miracle to have been born but that doesn't make him a messiah so um all of that usual stuff so we'll, i guess we'll see where it goes but my initial optimism about the show is kind of waning. I'm personally kind of losing interest in the show, where it's more just background noise that they're kind of doing the usual stuff. So we'll see how they round it out. But in general, um, it's kind of um, plateauing as a show. So we'll see how it plays itself out. I'm still going to watch it because overall I like the character of Daryl Dixon, but it doesn't really or I'm not sure where they're going to go with this or go with it or what's going to happen or if they're going to maybe find a cure in Laurent. Like I, I think I speculated it before, but if I didn't say before, I'll say it now that potentially Laurent might have the cure for the zombie apocalypse because of what happened to his mom during his birth. So we'll see how all that plays itself out. As far as Stargate SG-1 goes, I'm now done with seasons um, eight and nine. So we now have the threat of the Ori. Um, they're basically the evil versions of the Ancients. So the Ancients are supposedly the light side and the Ori are the dark side. So we're going to deal with that. Uh, we slowly get, we're getting the introduction to them as far as the Book of Origin, the um, Doci and the Priors and all of that's going on. So um from my memory of it overall it was a decent storyline um it seems like it was meant to be replaced the threat of the gould now that they're gone but i think at some point in the middle of all in, see, in the middle of season nine i want to say um one of the characters did mention that it's awfully convenient with this new threat when the stargate command is being threatened to get shut down or be transferred into the hands of a civilian organization again that they suddenly popped out of nowhere which they did in the scope of the show and how it was presented but thinking about it now in retrospect and seeing that transition from season eight to nine uh, the replicators being done and the end of the gould and all that it feels like the transition from those the prior storylines into the um ori wasn't handled nearly as well as um the introduction to stargate sg1 because you did have for example the um film to uh, lean back on and then you had the chance to introduce different kinds of gold it was built off of um egyptian mythology and all of that so this kind of feels like um yeah they did stumble upon it by accident but it could have been handled a little bit better to the point where it feels like um now also in retrospect that they could have gone back or they could have done something with the whole thing with the wraith that um the ancients in their attempts to ascend created the wraith but then also um or not the ancients didn't create the wraith but um the ancients in their uh, means to ascending suddenly came upon this thing that they have a difference in opinion as far as good and um bad um, and in that division, the basically the Ori or the Bad Ancients created the Wraith to try and defeat the Ancients. When they realized that the Wraith couldn't ascend, that's when the Ori came up with the Book of Origin and um, um, now, now they're in that galaxy to spread, try to take over the galaxy that way. Um, this is also all presuming um, or based on my memory of or lack of memory of what happens in season 10 uh, mostly because my memory of season 10 is now that the ori are in our galaxy um 
they're dealing with Adria, um, Claudia Black's character, or Vala's um, daughter in the show. And then um, her husband, the guy who is fighting for the Ori and learns that he was fighting for the wrong side, that the book, or not the wrong side, but the Ori were manipulating the Book of Origin to their own needs. So the Book of Origin is not a bad book. It was just being interpreted to serve the needs of the Ori. So, um... All of that was fine and it wasn't necessarily a bad thing but it was also one of those things where it feels like they could have extended it a little bit more or handled the transition a little bit better where um where it doesn't necessarily have to deal with for example the jaffa nation but in the jaffa nation's um efforts to convert jaffa take out the get rid of the rest of the gold and they come across the book of the ancients tie that in with the uh, with the humans and their stuff with the ancient and their knowledge and all that and ultimately you know finding this, these mysterious worlds of the ancients and coming across the book of origin because they land on a world for example that merlin knew about or king arthur or something like that for and his quest for the holy grail you know spend a season on that and then get to the war with the ori so it feels like just Part of it was that because there's now 10 seasons in and probably because of budgeting and all that they can't keep it going But since you have that cast change with SG-1 um, Moving the events of season 10 into 11 and then having that extra quest to find the Ori and learn more about the ancients Finding actual ancients and spending more time with them um, feels like it could have been a better more hashed out storyline and expansion that yeah we found the ori by accident but now that we know that there's something not right and they don't have a that they're not going out to play to rule the universe but ultimately if they make it into our galaxy then they have to defeat them or something so um part of it is just that exactly that um it was very it wasn't rushed but it was definitely truncated so they did skip over a few steps versus what they did with for example the storyline with the gould and all the stuff in the middle so that well all the they kind of they actually did take out a lot of the miscellaneous episodes um so you do still have still have the th things like the lucian alliance um but for the most part you don't have too many of those random one-off episodes like you do in the first few seasons of stargate sg1 but they didn't really um establish any more storylines so you could tell that they're slowly starting to get to the end of the show so um, with that being said, I am now in season 10, so I'm going to round it out and um, um, give my summary of the show and knock it off my bucket list that I can now say that I've officially seen every single episode of the show. In this case, Stargate SG-1. Um, I think I did see them all before, but like I said, when I started this undertaking that I wasn't sure about it, so now I can be sure. And I am surprised to say that i am finishing it a lot sooner than i expected because i am able to i was able to watch a few episodes a day um instead of the one or two that i was expecting so um it works itself out very very nicely um so with that being said i did have a chance to also ca uh, watch the latest episode of ahsoka so season one episode seven dreams and madness um so we start off the episode with a good cameo which i'll get to in a second but we have Hera dealing with the uh, fallout from defying the um, New Republic's orders and going off to that planet to find out what happened to Ahsoka and Sabine. We have that one senator who is very skeptical about everything she's saying and doing and saying that we're that they're a New Republic, they're based on law and order, they expect the generals to follow orders and they want her court-martialed and all of that. So this is where that cameo from C-3PO shows up to um, kind of hedge in um, Princess Leia saying that um, she ordered Hera to go do it on her, and this was all done on her orders. So kind of skirting the rules and um, understanding that what Hera is doing is not wrong and wanting to support her on all that. And then a good little um, conversation between Hera and Mon Mothma about the how real the threat from Thrawn is. So we'll see kind of how it all plays out in um, the season finale. But episode seven does bring with us um, more 
of a continuation of what happened in the last episode. So we have um, Balin and his apprentice going after um, Hera and Ezra. We have them catching up a little bit. Ahsoka finally makes it, so she they go through that minefield. Um, she fights with Balin and uh, leaves him stranded to go after Ezra and um, Sabine. So it was kind of just a, a episode to catch up on all of that to have that stepping stone between the last episode and the season finale. So we'll kind of see what happens. But overall, not a bad episode, but not a great episode. The last episode was definitely better, but it was good to see more Thrawn in action and him telling um, the um, Night Sister lady who's helping him that Balin is ultimately an expendable um, character. He's only um, amusing his antics for the sake of their own plans but ultimately just like um, Ezra and Sabine they can be left behind they are not critical to Thrawn's plan to return to um, the known galaxy so that is all there is for that um, so with that I'm gonna round it out with the latest gameplay update so if you follow along on the YouTube channel um, I have started playing the Doom 2 mod, the Plutonia Experiment. So, um, the summary, or, or a quick truncated summary of the show, or the game, is that we have UAC rebuilding um, the company after the events of, I guess, Doom 2. And so they're trying, and then they find these portals, they're able to use the Marines to close them, but they're not able to close them all. Hell, and still ends up showing up there at Jupiter. So the Doom guy being the closest one there is sent to take care of the problem. Um, so in reading a little bit about this mod, I did see that it was a very controversial mod, I guess, because it was harder than, for example, the prior mod TNT Evolution. So for me going into it, I was kind of holding off playing it because I was kind of um, hesitant to play such a hard uh, game, especially if it's that hard on a easy setting. Um, but I got to thinking that, well, if it's that hard, I won't be able to get beyond the first couple of levels, or the level will just take that much longer to finish. Um, once I can figure out how to get around the levels and find the keys and escape and all that. Um, but also, I guess I've practiced the game on various mods enough to the point where now that I know the various um, demons and their abilities, how to kill them. So for example, um, the Kako demon kills well with a uh, rocket launcher or the uh, machine gun. Um, the brown one, it, the one that spews the, um, um, skele the flaming skeletons is good with a rocket launcher to kill the, that, the brown Kako demon, I forget what it's called, and then use a shotgun to kill those flaming skulls um shotguns are good with the um brown demons uh, same thing with the barons of hell they're good with a shotgun or a rocket launcher so now that i know i know things like that and then of course with the uh, chain gunners just be careful with them in general but use my own chain gun to uh, kill them but now that i know kind of all those various intricacies of all the demons i'm not going to be any better at it but i know i'm not going to be any worse they don't really catch me by surprise but um, the short of it is I thought I would give it a try, see how it goes. Like I said, if I did re reading online, it does seem like a difficult task to play that mod. Um, but now that I've played a few different, uh, now that I've, I have gone through over the past couple of years, gone through Doom 1 and 2, or Doom 1, Doom 2, uh, Doom 64, and then various mods, that it, sh it should be a little bit better to um, get through this one. So. Um, the I'll have a link in the show notes to the gameplay playlist, but it's also up on the YouTube channel. So um, I'm kind of doing what I did on, I think, the last couple of mods where I'm doing a level a day. So or a level at a time, basically. So um, that gives that opens it up a little bit for me as far as um, having time to get through the level. So, you know, if it's an easy level, like the first couple, there'll be, there'll be shorter gameplays. But if they're harder, or if I need to get weapons, like um, um, in that in, in episode or in level four, I was trying to get the plasma gun. So it took a, it was on one of those random pillars. I kept falling off the second one, but the plasma gun was on the third one. So just getting to that pillar took a little bit of time. So I came back try, and did the other parts of the level, tried again, 
I was having trouble with the door on which side to start from, so trying that over and over, so just things like that. So depending on the difficulty of the level, I will try different ways to get through them, but um, I'm still going to give it a shot and go through it, see how it ends up, uh, see if it's as good or bad as, I mean, the overall consensus is that it is a difficult mod, but it's a good one as well. And I will say that the levels so far do seem nicely decorated and um, set up and they're visually nice so we'll see how the rest of the game goes but um i'm gonna give it a shot and see how far i can get through it um but much like other mods it is i think it's 30 or 31 levels with a couple of um secret levels so um i figure in about a month or so i should be able to finish the game at that at the current estimate of a level a night so um those can be found, all those gameplays are being put up on the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash pateln01. But that is all for this particular episode, so if you have any questions, comments, feedback, uh, what do you think of anything I cover in the show, then all the links to the social media sites are on the website at headphonesneal.reviews. And of course you can check out the website for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. Um, you get early access and ad-free versions of the show by supporting it on Patreon at patreon.com slash pateln01. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time...